Hello. I'm on my adventure again, and today I'm at St. Mary and St. Barla Church at Norbury. It's a rather interesting church with many hidden secrets. So let's explore these secrets together. Enjoy! On visiting Norbury Church in Derbyshire, I had quite a high expectations. I had previously read the poem, The Veils of Weaver, a local descriptive poem by John Gisborne. In Mr Gisborne's long poem, he writes a paragraph about Norbury Church, which is read by John Sweet Norbury, decked with rural smiles, gleams faintly through these sylvan aisles. Mid Gothic grandeur soars serene, o'er bold varieties of scene. Seas weaver arch his giant crest, and give the South his lawny breast. I believe this poet has spoken about a different church, as Norbury Church has no spire and its lower tower can be no stretch of imagination, be called so serene. The building is dedicated to an unknown saint, Barlock by name, and the conjecture that he was some British saint of an early century certainly receives confirmation from a recent discovery of two elaborately decorated pre-Norman cross shafts which were found built into one of the buttresses of the north wall. At one time the church would have been connected to the manor house which is now owned by the National Trust. The ground plan of Norbury Church is most unusual, for the chancel is only three feet less than the nave. 
there is a north but no south aisle. The tower standing between two chapels taking its place. It's the chancel, however, which is the glory of Norbury Church, and its nine grey windows which flood a stream of light into the church. The beautiful windows, four on each side, are filled with the original 14th century glass in grisaille, covered with interlacing scroll work and floriated designs relieved here and there with colour and having the shield of arms of a noble Lancastrian family inserted into each light. The rich glass in soft browns and greens is unique of its kind. These date back to Henry Knifton's day, the rector who built the chancel in the middle of the fourteenth century. For the glass of a fine east window was taken from the windows in the north aisle to replace what had been sold by a vandal incumbent of a century ago. There is a representation of the unknown saint in one of the windows. I wonder if you can spot this saint. But only guesses can be made about his identity. Those Saint Barlock is mentioned in the pre Reformation, Fitzpatrick Wills, as a patron of the church in later days. It has often been described as dedicated to Our Lady. In the account of a church written by Michael Jones in the family book, we get a valuable description of a glass that then remained in the church before it was removed from its original position. The following paragraph also makes us regret the ill-starred restoration of 1842. The screen of curiously carved oak, with much curvilinear tracery, which has been painted in red, blue and gold, separates the chancel from the nave. Similar screens and canopies occupy the spaces between the arches both on the south and north aisles forming chapels in which are placed the tomb of Nicholas Fitzherbert on the south, and the tomb of Ralph Fitzherbert and his wife Elizabeth Marshall on the north. On the chancel floor stand several finely sculptured table tombs of Fitzherberts. These form the great glory of a chancel, and reading through different books, these are not in their original position. I now come to the two tombs which make the chief glory of Norbury Church. Few parish churches in England possesses two such tombs as these. The drone gives an excellent idea of their beauty. This tomb is of John Fritz Herbert's grandfather Nicholas. His effigy, delicately carved in alabaster, is in a plate of armour. The hands are joined as in prayer. The hair is straight, the head resting on a helmet. The visor punctured with round holes. The helmet is surmounted by a reef from which rises the Fritz Herbert crest. The clenched left hand with a gauntlet. He wears a collar of suns and roses 
with a lion pendant which also occurs in the brass of his brother-in-law Roger Bowl in Sawley Church. The sword belt is beautifully ornamented with rosettes and from it are suspended the long sword and a dagger, both perfect. The feet rest upon the figure of a lion, a tiny angel holding a shield, sits on the lion's back and supports the tip of a right foot. The two figures at the west end of a tomb represent Fitzherbert and his wife Elizabeth, supposedly. The two masterpieces are very similar in treatment, although several points of difference in detail may be seen. The most obvious being the difference in treatment of the ornamental top edge. Under the foot of Rolf is a crouching figure of a bearded beadsman. The collar of Edward IV is also round the neck of Ralph, but it has a boar as a pendant, the consignia of Richard III. The effigy of Elizabeth wears a good example of a dress of a period, having a close bodice and gown at one time green and a mantle of red with some beads of a girdle. The hair is arranged in a high double peaked with a headdress, which has been in gilt. Round her neck is a chain having a pendant of a blessed virgin and child. There are two small dogs of the foot of her feet, the feet being covered by the dress, and a cushion beneath her head is supported by two angels. The inscription on the tomb of Ralph Fitzherbert states, The dart of death no man may flee, nay the common law of mortality hath demanded to be buried here. The body of Rafe Fitzherbert, squire, patron of this church and of the town lord, the which deceased years of our lord, 1480 and 3 of Marseille the second day thus parted he. With him is laid upon this sepulchre. Elizabeth his wife begone in shore, daughter of John Marshall, esquire, lord of Upton and of Sedsel, seven sons and eight daughters they had here in this life together whilst that they were. Merciful Jesus, that piteest mankind, in thy bliss grant them a place to find prestes ambobus requiem deus. Thank you, John. Between Nicholas's tomb and the wall is an incised alabaster effigy you would undoubtedly ignore. Some believe it to be Benedicta wrapped in a shroud. She was the unfaithful wife of Sir John Fitzherbert, 13th Lord. Others say it may be Elizabeth wife of Ralph Fitzherbert, who died before Ralph. If this is the case, who is the effigy laid beside Ralph Fitzherbert? Inquiring minds want to know. The great blue stone slab with brasses and now lies between the tombs is a monument of Saint Anthony and his second wife, Dame Maud Cotton.
there is very much more that it would be interesting to describe in and about Norbury Church. And certainly a whole 40 minute film could be made about the Fritz Herberts. Before leaving this church, it is only right to visit the graveyard and enjoy the splendour of a peaceful church. A rare jewel set in a sylvan scene with grandeur all its own. Till Norbury's arches reign supreme. A lantern wrought in stone. Gaze with a thankful heart.